Hey folks, so today I'm going to talk about something different that I've been working on. Um, I have been porting my project over from a QMake as a build system to CMake. And if you're not familiar with Qt and QMake, then this video will probably not mean much to you. So go ahead and watch something more entertaining. Um, if you do have a Qt project and you're thinking about migrating over, then uh, this video might be pretty helpful. Um, for me, when I was looking up documentation on how to port QMake to CMake, there, there is some stuff floating around online, but none of it really qualitatively explains why you have to do certain things. Um, and for me, it wasn't obvious how I could make, make a one-to-one -one port of my build system. So I'm going to talk about what I did and how I did it and why I did it. And I'm going to try to keep this as succinct as possible because I tend to ramble. So we're going to get right into it. Um, on the left side here, we have my QMake uh, project file, and on the right side, we have my CMake lists.txt file, which is the uh, file format that CMake takes to uh, compile and build. So I'm not going to talk about how to actually download and run CMake, but it's fairly straightforward, so hopefully folks can figure it out. So I'll start right at the top. Um, the first thing I do is I print out a message. Um, that's very similar syntax in QMake and CMake, except in CMake, you can also specify the, the diagnostic level of the message. So in this case, I'm just letting uh, the system know that I have a status that I want to put out. So I can, you can also set a warning, an error, um, depending on the, um, yeah, the type of message you want to put forth. Um, next up is uh, on the QMake side, we have a couple of different things that we, um, some boilerplate, if you will, to set up the project. So template app is just telling uh, telling Qt that I'm going to be building an executable. Uh, target is giving me the project name, and then I'm loading in a bunch of Qt uh, libraries um, that come, come with Qt. So these are the Qt built-ins. Um, so Qt's way of doing that is that you just take the Qt variable and you append whatever um, sub-modules of Qt you want. So this whole, this block line 7 to 20, 20 or so here, uh, it's going to look pretty different in CMake. So I set my project name with the project command. Um, that's not so bad, right? Uh, but then we actually have to set uh, a minimum required version uh, for CMake. So CMake needs to know it needs to know what version of itself it uh, is required to run your build because CMake is always adding new features. So if there is a feature incompatibility, um, this will help you diagnose that. It'll just you know tell you, hey, you can't use this feature. Your CMake version is too old. So always use the latest and greatest. Um, next, I'm setting a target. So I guess this is sort of analogous to setting um, the target in QMake. Um, in CMake, um, you can have... Um, a number of different targets. So in my case, I'm actually setting a variable in CMake named target underscore name to Reverie, which is my project name. So um, for my purposes, that's doing the same thing that target here is, um, even though you know, there's not really a built-in notion of like a local target necessarily in CMake, um, I'm just taking a variable and naming it, um, naming it Reverie, which is my project name once again. Um, and then I'm going to skip ahead a bunch because the two files don't really line up one-to-one -one in terms of the logic. So don't worry about any of this right now. Um, what I'm doing that's relevant um, to sort of setting this target here, uh, not relevant, um, maybe analogous is a better word, um, is when I actually add an executable. Um, so the add executable command, it, it is named a bit more intuitively than what you get in QMake. Um, so in CMake, add executable is saying, OK, I'm going to create an executable with the given name, um, which is the target name that I just defined. And I'm going to add a bunch of sources to that. Now, I'll go into more detail about that in a little bit. Uh, but this command is what's adding the executable. Um, uh, this uh, dollar sign and the curly brackets here is just how you dereference a variable in CMake. So I had a target name variable that I defined using the set command, and I'm creating an executable of that name. So that is what <laughs> the same thing that's going on here in, Q, in QMake is what's happening here in CMake. Um, so as you can see, it's already pretty different. Um, so it's a little bit to wrap your head around, but uh, trust me, it's worth it in the end. Uh, you get a lot more flexibility. So anyway, moving on, uh, so I've created a project, I've given it a name, um, and I'm saying, all right, you're going to make an executable for that project. 
Um, what I haven't described yet is how I'm going to add these Qt libraries. And to do that, I have to do a few things. First is I have to uh, modify my CMake file to make sure that I can accommodate uh, all the stuff that Qt wants. So Qt actually has a, a, some fun uh, built-ins in CMake to make it a little bit more user-friendly to set things up. So uh, what you do is you uh, first, uh, for Qt builds, you'll typically want to um, set this variable, CMake include current dir, to on. Um, just because that's sort of more similar to QMake's behavior. And then you're going to want to turn on these three things, auto mock, auto RCC, and auto UIC. Um, and these are newer features of CMake. I don't know from which version exactly, um, but they save you some trouble in configuring how the, the mock and other aspects of uh, what would normally be a QMake build are happening. So don't worry if you don't know too much about what mock is. If, if you've been using Qt, you should be at least a little bit familiar. Um, but it pretty much generates um, these mock files um, that are what it actually, um, they're, they're pretty much like OBJs, uh, I guess is the best way to describe it. They're these, um, they're these output build files that are generated from your source code. You know, Qt expands out all of its macros and all of the stuff going on behind the scenes. And those are the files that uh, it actually knows how to, how to run as uh, functional Qt code. So this is just pretty much telling CMake, okay, take the mock system from Qt and run that automatically. If you see files that have Qt code, do the QMake magic that I would have to do to get the right stuff generating. That's my level of understanding of it. And that's functional and as far as I've investigated into how exactly mock works. Um, RCC is your resources. So this is saying if you see a resource file, um, build that like you would with QMake. And s similar for uh, the auto UIC here is if I see any UI files, um, then uh, generate uh, handle those as I would in QMake as well. Uh, and then I'm doing a couple of other things that are actually kind of tricky to do in Qt, at least in the version I'm using, which is 5.12. Uh, it was uh, You had to do some finagling to get the later C++ versions. So um, so what's going on, and I'd say uh, lines, yeah, these 25, yeah, so it's about the same line numbers, 25 to 30 and uh, 25 to 30 here. What's happening is I'm setting my multiprocess flag. So in QMake, you just add to QMake uh, CXX flags, and this is just saying, all right, use different, multiple threads for my compiling. It just makes it happen faster. Um, and in CMake, you have CMake CXX flags. So general, uh, generally, uh, if you had something that was a QMake CXX flag, that's going to be a CMake CXX flag. And thankfully, that's one-to-one. -one. So um, if you were going to append a flag in QMake, you would just use set, and uh, that is going to append a flag to your CMake CXX flags variable, um, if you do it properly. Uh, in which case, you're going to want to set CMake CXX flags to itself. So I'm dereferencing its own value and then appending the multiprocessing flag to it. Um, what's happening above here is I'm setting the version of C++ that I'm going to be using. So I'm saying I want to use C++ 20 and I'm going to uh, enforce that standard. Uh, that looked pretty different in the QMake build. I have to append the flag for that manually. There's not like a prettier way of setting that. Um, and I actually really had to iterate to figure out what the correct command was for my version of Qt because it was not taking a bunch of different flags that I was trying to give it. Uh, so it's a lot easier in CMake it. I, I figured it out on the first try. Um, so then what you're going to want to do is, let's see, so in QMake, I'm, yeah, so I'm setting a bunch of other things um, that you don't actually really need. Um, these, if you have like C++ latest or um, adding all these like various config options, um, they throw them out. Uh, they don't Q, uh, CMake works pretty differently, so they don't carry over. Uh, it took me a while to figure out, do I need these? Um, it's you know, How do you ask a question like that online? Um, would, which Qt configs become CMake configs? Um, yeah, it's, it's challenging. So you don't need these. Um, and what you do need to do, though, is you need to add your Qt path to um, yeah, to CMake. So let me let me just make sure that I'm not uh, talking nonsense here. So yeah, so I'm saying here that if um, 
my CMake system name, which is a uh, built-in in CMake, uh, matches Windows. So if I'm running on Windows right now, then I'm going to add my Qt path to, um, and I'm going to set CMake prefix path to um, my path to Qt. Um, so CMake prefix path is another built-in. Um, it's just sort of where CMake looks uh, for certain build files. Um, so, you know, feel free to read the documentation if you want to understand that in more detail. Um, or just take my word for it, you need to add Qt to your prefix path if you want things to work properly. Um, I should flesh this out and make this cross-platform, um, but I develop on Windows like a lunatic. So uh, that's all I need for now. And so, yeah, I actually had to add this line to my CMake. So line 43 here, um, CMake auto UIC search paths. Um, I had to actually set that, I had to add the folder explicitly where I'm containing my UI stuff. So I have in my project repo, I have a bunch of stuff and just a UI folder. So um, I don't know why I needed to add this explicitly, but the auto UIC was not finding my UI files without this line added. So adding that fixed it, it was able to find everything hunky-dory. Um, just make note that CMake current source directory is the directory that your CMake lists.txt file is in. Um, <laughs> local paths are always confusing. I actually, everything I have in this CMake ends up um, solving out to be an absolute path based on how I've configured it. Um, but I could have just added relative path strings for everything. Um, but this way I think is a bit more extensible if you move, shuffle things around. Um, it's, uh, it'll save you a headache in the future. So anyway, try to use this, I think. I don't know if that's the best practice, but it makes sense to me. It's what I, it's what I would do. So, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Um, okay, finally, we are on to um, actually adding the Qt core libraries. So um, what we want to do is we want to use find package. So there's, there's a couple of ways you can add libraries in CMake. Um, there's a find libraries command where you find libraries explicitly and it uh, tries to resolve the path for them. Um, you could manually add a path to the file, um, but I think the best way is find package because it's very powerful. What this is pretty much doing is it's saying, okay, I have uh, Qt5, look for that in all of you know my CMake paths and uh, find the core component. Um, and then it's going to explicitly require that component. So if that if Qt5 core is not found, it's going to throw an error in my CMake and it's not going to build. So this is a way of verifying that it's finding everything you want. Um, what was tricky for me is figuring out what names correspond to the Qt names when you're adding libraries. Um, turns out you just capitalize them in the right places and you're good to go. I actually don't even know if it's case sensitive. Um, that is something I didn't test out. Um, but yeah, so if you have any of these libraries, this is how you translate them over into CMake. So all of that stuff I just showed you, leading up to line 55 here, and then you know that executable line way, way down farther, uh, pretty much sums up this first 20 lines of QMake. So um, it's different, and it, it seems like a lot more, um, but it's a lot more because CMake is a much more generic build system and it has a lot of power so it, it has to it has to do more but uh, to get to the same place but it also lets you go to um, much more adventurous places so i think i'm going to split this video right here so i'm going to stop for now um, and then in the next video i'm going to continue chatting about uh, the other features that i've uh, ported to cmake so Hopefully that'll be it, because if I have like a five-part video series on this, I'm going to go a little bit crazy. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll uh, be back soon. Till next time, folks.